There was a staunch solidarity action at the Woodford Folk Festival this week. Um, we received a media release by the Justice for Palestine Mianjin, and it said, we will not let Minister Tony Burke talk about the arts and storytelling while Israel is murdering artists, creatives and journalists in Palestine. Tony refuses to admit we are witnessing a genocide. And in this clip that follows, the Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations and Minister for the Arts, Tony Burke, is interviewed by a press gallery journo, Karen Middleton, the author of Afghanistan, The Unwinnable War. The questions were lame until pressed by Justice for Palestine Mianjin activists to ask about the Israeli genocide of Palestinians in Gaza. The minister does not answer the question. He is running scared. The arts minister is part of a hopeless government that is an apologist for Israel's unwinnable genocidal war against Palestine. I did notice that the crowd applauded the non-answer offered up by the minister. Not one question from Karen Middleton when given the opportunity to point out to the minister that Israeli snipers are targeting journalists in Gaza, murdering through direct attacks over a hundred journalists since the 7th of October 2023. For example, Yasser Abu Namus of Asahle media organization was murdered in a strike on his family home in Khan Yunus in Gaza just last week. Now have a listen and see what the Minister Tony Burke says. Uh, up front and, and relatively tight. But I do want, because Woodford is a, a festival which I love, I've been coming here for 10 years, and, and a festival which has always been very open to all the different points of view. Uh, and I want to make sure that we get that opportunity when we get questions. But allow me to deal for where when we came to... that we have in a free democracy that is not often in a lot of places. So let's all keep it coming, okay? My, my final question is that there is concern that this conflict has gone beyond seeking to root out Hamas and that it has become something bigger and the word has been gen genocide has been used here. What is your response to those concerns? Do you share those concerns? Um, okay, so... I'll First of all, there is a way that people are asked to interview where there is always a test of words. Will you use the word genocide? Will you use the word apartheid? On the Israeli side, it's how many times in the interview will you issue a condemnation of Hamas? And it's as though, it's as though there's, there's all these tests and anything short of that particular test that has been set for you is a complete fail. And what then... And what, and what then happens, what then happens is we end up with a debate about the word and not a debate about what is happening on the ground. So let me... The word is what's happening. So let me put it in these terms, because I think they matter. 
the Israeli Defence Minister said, there will be no food, no water, no fuel, this is a complete siege, and then described the community in Gaza as human animals. That's what he said. Similarly, you had different claims being made about bombing, about who was in fact being targeted. It is very difficult to question who is being targeted when it is the actions of a sniper. The reports we've seen of snipers have been shooting one unarmed woman and then an older woman who went to help the, the unarmed woman who'd been shot. Similarly, similarly, the destruction of civilian infrastructure has been extraordinary. The only time that I have seen an acknowledgement of a mistake was when a sniper shot someone holding a white flag, something which is meant to be protected under the rules of war. Now, in providing all of those examples, there will be words that are occurring to people in their minds, and I would rather keep the debate to what is in fact happening on the on the ground. Because, because very simply, if I had used the word that's being asked of me, people would have gone away thinking and comparing, well, is it identical to the Holocaust? That's what would have happened. The discussion that I believe, that I believe makes a difference is in people hearing the facts of what ha is happening on the ground and they will very quickly choose words to describe it. Thank you. Okay, so here's what's going to happen now. I've seen horrific things as a result of the occupation. As a result of that, I have been a very strong advocate within my party. Uh, the, before the 7th of October, so I think it's worth remembering because sometimes this is forgotten in general media discourse, the history of the region did not begin on the 7th of October. Uh, prior to the 7th of October, uh, we had resumed funding for the UN agency. Prior to the 7th of October, uh, we had returned to the language of describing the Palestinian territories as the occupied Palestinian territories. We had uh, established as Australia's position that the settlements are illegal under international law. Uh, and I respect absolutely that, uh, and I personally was responsible uh, as, as a seconder for the resolution that went through our national conference some years ago, uh, calling for the recognition of the state of Palestine. Uh, Where so, is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? But, um, you are... It's a huge frustration from a lot of people. A huge frustration. Um, what, what's here is, is part of that, but I, yeah, I, 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 was, I was with the Palestinian community on Christmas Day, the, the individual stories that people tell, and they're not getting it from the news, they're getting it from their families. Uh, they're getting very direct, unfiltered information of what's happening on the ground is horrific. Uh, they you know, the, the position, the things that Australia can do, uh, there are some things that are within, that are not within our control. Getting people through the Rafa crossing is not within our control. We get a lot of people asking for that, but that list is controlled by Israel and Egypt. Right. It's not controlled by Australia. I, I have finished my questions about that subject, and I'm going to ask you to respectfully listen to the rest or, or move on, whatever you'd prefer to do. I'm talking to the people at the front. You're welcome to stay, but I'm going to ask you to do it quietly because I have arts questions to ask. You just said this is democracy. It is. None of us have a chance to ask questions. Yes, you have a chance to ask questions at the end. I've, I've explained that a number of times. There's a mic right there. You, if you have more questions, there are many questions. If you have more questions, you can line up and ask them. And I've explained the rules. I've done it twice. I'm not going to do it a third time. I think you understand. Is everyone happy with that approach? Yes! Okay. Thank you. So, 
I thank you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask people to to, to just let us go go on now because we had a good good go on that subject. It's a very important subject, and people feel very strongly about it. So I understand and appreciate that, and I'm sure the minister does too. So. I, Okay, I've asked you. I'm going to ask the security to move you on if you can't be quiet. Please. That's the that's the choice, okay? Because people are allowed to hear the rest of the talk. So what's what's your answer? Are you going, are you going to let me finish? I'm going to take that as a yes. We told last year when you spoke about Paul Keating, when the Prime Minister, playing uh, Marla, classical music, some of his cabinet ministers, and leaving them a bit puzzled. I mean, does Al Gore speak tunes? What do you what do you what do you what role does it play in your uh, political practice? Yep, we've talked about that, and I've asked you. So now I'm going to ask them to move you on. Okay? If you can't be quiet. Okay?